Hello all, before we begin, please read the flash notice. This video is part one of two videos I'm posting where I'm designing characters based off of different cat breeds. Today I'll go through the process of creating characters based on the Sphinx and Ragdoll. First I did some research into the physical characteristics and temperaments that are typical of these breeds. Then I drew a specific cat from that breed to be my base for the human design. I started off with the Sphinx cat, which is spelt differently from the Egyptian Sphinx, and drew a body to design the clothes on top of. Usually I would do this step in pencil where I would have to redraw the entire person each time I changed the outfit. But I realised it would take much less time if I did it this way instead. Since this month is Pride Month, where we celebrate people's differences, especially for people in the LGBTQ plus community, I took extra care to make these characters diverse in appearance and personality to make sure no one feels left out. Which is another reason I decided to draw the body of these characters first, so that we could see the different body and skin types. My Sphinx character, who I'll call Ollie, is a 14 year old male with lighter skin and blue eyes. He has the medical condition Alopecia areata, which kind of sounds like a magic spell when I pronounce it like that, but it most certainly is not. It is a condition where you lose patches of hair and can eventually lose all of it which is not what causes hairlessness in sphinx cats, but is the closest condition I could find that would make a human hairless in the same way a sphinx is. Ollie's clothing is inspired by a summer vibe, but is designed for cold weather as the sphinx comes from Toronto in Canada. Sphinx cats can easily become cold due to their lack of fur, so Ollie is the type of guy to easily get cold, and he would rather live somewhere warmer than Canada, hence his summer aesthetic, which is shown through his seashell clip and sea glass necklace. Since sphinxes need to be washed regularly so they don't get a build up of muck on their skin, Ollie is adamant about maintaining his hygiene, which is also part of how he copes with losing his hair at a young age, by taking care of his appearance in other ways. His hair loss is something he is very insecure about, but he refuses to wear any of his wigs casually, as he is a bit of a nerd and likes to save his wigs for cosplay purposes. He is mainly interested in media that relates to high fantasy, where everything is beautiful and intricately designed. He also likes doing research on the internet about history, especially of the medieval era. He hopes to become a high school history teacher when he gets older, but he's been told that he could pursue any job he wants as he always becomes great at anything he sets his mind to. But for now, he is still trying to figure out how to make friends with a low self-esteem, a sensitivity to criticism, and a burning passion for niche topics. Also, as you will see when I colour the little badge on his backpack, he is celebrating Pride Month as a pansexual person. And as you can see in the shirt thing wrapped around his waist, I tried incorporating the colours of the pansexual flag, but uh, I couldn't make that work. Which leads into the most difficult part about designing Ollie, which was his colour palette, because I wanted it to be full of warm neutrals to give a summer meets winter vibe. 
but I also wanted his favourite colour to be a cool sea green, which already poses itself as a problem, but was even more frustrating to deal with when I gave him a cool toned skin colour. If you're still not following, the problem here is that I was wanting to clash warm and cool colours together, and was struggling to find a way to unify them. I tried making it work by having the values and grayscale look perfect, but since that didn't work, I eventually just changed his skin tone to be warmer, then overlaid it onto the other colours in the palette, and finally readjusting the values to look good. And as the final touches to this piece, I have sketched Ollie playing video games and having a bubble bath with a sphinx cat. Next up is the ragdoll cat who I've given a much more dynamic pose due to her personality and also because I actually did an art warm up before drawing this character. Which always makes my poses less stiff and helps defeat the blank canvas. Anyway, this ragdoll cat's name is Alicia and she is an 18 year old female with tanned peach skin as her regular skin colour but most of her is pale because she has vitiligo. I've given her vitiligo so that I could incorporate the colour point pattern of a ragdoll into her human design. But I didn't make the dark patches as dark as they are on the cat because I wanted Alicia to have a vibrant and dark outfit. So her skin needed to be more dull as to not clash. Her outfit is inspired by the dark academia aesthetic and pictures of the night sky. It is designed for both cooler and hotter temperatures, as the ragdoll cat comes from California in the US. But to Alicia, the practicality of her clothes is not a worry, because she would rather focus on glamour. She always has jewellery on her, whether she's wearing it how it's intended or has it hanging from the chain on her pocket. The green stones always present in her jewellery are aventurine, which are known in the spiritual world for promoting good luck. Alicia is very interested in the spiritual and will usually ask for a person's zodiac sign when they first meet. She claims that she can hear a person's aura, which explains her close connection to music. Alicia loves music and can play double bass and piano, and she hopes that she can make it in the music industry one day. But her main goal for now is to become a therapist. She's been told that psychology would be a good field for her to study, because in a conversation with her, She's more likely to be the person listening than talking. But she's also been told that she's aloof, because she has the tendency to make everything about herself and her interests. 
which others can take as her not really listening to them. Despite her quiet nature, she is not shy. She has many friends that she clings tightly to and she will often give acquaintances surprise hugs. Alicia is definitely a more touchy-feely type of person, though to the surprise of those around her, she will be celebrating Pride Month as an asexual and biromantic person. For me, designing Alicia was a lot easier than designing Ollie, perhaps because her outfit had a lot less components to it that I needed to assign a different colour. Though I'm still slightly frustrated because I didn't properly adjust the pattern on her dress so that it, run it runs along the folds. But I've already merged those layers, so it is what it is. I finished the drawing with some sketches of Alicia playing keyboard and looking at the stars with a ragdoll cat. And that's the end of this video. Make sure you come back for part 2 and thanks for watching. Bye!